So for our patients who have an ACL injury, should they be having surgery or not? Are they more susceptible to other injuries like meniscal tears? Are they more susceptible to osteoarthritis in the future? That's what's coming up, let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here, welcome back to Clinical Physio. So one of the most common questions we get asked about the knee, if a patient has an ACL injury, should they have surgery or is physiotherapy alone enough to get them back to their activities and sport happy and healthy? Well, in this video, we're gonna try and dive into some of the key pieces of evidence to answer that question. So let's start with a piece of evidence, which is pro-physio, pro-conservative management, very famous in the physio world, Frobel et al, 2013, treatment for acute ACL tear, five-year outcome of a randomized control trial. So the authors separated 121 patients into two groups. The first group of 62 people had an early ACL reconstruction. The second, the 59 remaining, were placed in a group that was for physiotherapy with the option of delayed ACL reconstruction if needed. And both of these groups were analyzed over a five-year period. So what did they find? Well, after five years, patients from both groups completed the COOS score, the Knee Injury and Osteoarthritis Outcome Score. And the researchers found that there was no significant differences in the scores between patients in the both groups after that five year period. They also found that when they analyzed x-rays of patients in both groups, there was no statistical significant differences in the x-ray findings to suggest that the patients who didn't have surgery were more likely to have osteoarthritis in the future. So here the researchers are effectively suggesting that there's no major benefit of having an ACL reconstruction as opposed to not having an ACL reconstruction and instead relying on physiotherapy. However, there's a little bit of a red herring in it for me. So we said that the second group of individuals were assigned to a physiotherapy group with the option of delayed ACL reconstruction in the future if it was needed. So was it needed? Well, in the study, 51% of that group went on to have that delayed ACL reconstruction. That's a high percentage. Half the people in the group who planned to not have an ACL reconstruction ended up having one. What the researchers didn't necessarily go through from what I can see is the reason why those patients went on to have surgery. So for example, was it because they just changed their mind? Is it because they started getting more pain? Is it because they found that there was increasing instability in their knee after they tried to return to sport and therefore thought they needed to have one? Unfortunately, it's a question I can't answer, but for me, it's a real sticking point. So let's dive into a different article looking at the other side of the coin, the other perspective. So this is Hagmeier et al, 2019, who analyzed the rate of secondary meniscal tear following an ACL injury. Now this was a very extensive study done over an 18 year follow-up period with no less than 1,398 patients. They separated their patients into three different groups. Those who had early ACL reconstruction within six months, those who had no ACL reconstruction, instead relying on physio alone, and the third group who had delayed ACL reconstruction beyond six months. So then they analyzed the rate of secondary meniscal tear in the three groups. The first group, early ACL reconstruction, only 7% rate. Those who had no ACL reconstruction, who had physio only, 19%. And those who had a delayed ACL reconstruction, 33%. So if we combine those last two groups, if you didn't have surgery, or if you had delayed ACL reconstruction, you were more than 50% likely to have a secondary meniscal tear as a result. Wow. So what's the problem with this? Well, if you have a secondary meniscal tear, it might mean more pain, reduced range of movement, more problems in the future, more difficult to return to your sport and activities, and that means deconditioning. But more importantly, Hagmeier et al highlighted that of all the patients who had a secondary meniscal tear, 73% of them went on to have a partial meniscectomy surgery where a portion of their meniscus is removed. So I suppose the story or flow chart from Hagmeier et al's research is as follows. An individual has an ACL injury. They don't have surgery or they have delayed surgery. They then go back to their sport, potentially on an unstable knee. As a result of that, they are up to 50% more likely to experience a secondary meniscal tear. They then, the majority of time, have to go on to have surgery to remove part of their meniscus. And with less meniscus, that is what increases the chance of osteoarthritis in the future. And as our good friend and orthopedic consultant, Mr. Tricker says, 
Okay, so the risk of chondral, i.e. articular surface and meniscal injury after ACL in an unstable knee is 1% a month. The key is unstable knee. Yeah. So when the patient you're treating non-operatively says my knee is giving way still, get it referred. Yeah. So in summary, we know that patients who have an ACL injury can manage without surgery, but it depends on certain factors. How unstable is their knee? Does the anatomy of their knee allow for more stability? What kind of activities are they going to get involved in in the future? Are they going to be in risky positions like twisting mechanisms and sports that require that twisting mechanism? And is that going to be a factor in experiencing a secondary meniscal tear in the future? And as Mr. Tricker says, perhaps the key here is the unstable knee. That makes a huge difference. So it's super important that the patient and the orthopedic consultant have a really good chat about all those factors to come up with the best solution for them. And if you'd like a full interview with our good friend and orthopedic consultant, Mr. Tricker, that goes through all of those discussions, you can find the link up here. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you've enjoyed it, please smash that like button to support us and subscribe to the channel for our best updates. You can also find us on our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.